to Windy Melbourne, Florida, the 2013 FHSA Boys Soccer Championships. Time for the 4A state title game between the Warriors of George Steinbrenner High School out of Lutz near Tampa. 19 wins, 2 losses, 3 ties. And the Gulf Coast Sharks from Naples, 18 wins, 3 losses, and 3 ties. Welcome back to McIntyre Stadium here on the campus of Melbourne High School. I'm Marty Palman, joined by the coach Scott Carswell from Merritt Island High School, the head girls coach, soccer coach there as we get ready for the 4A state championship game and coach interesting matchup here between Steinbrenner and Gulf Coast uh, both teams were district runners up had to go on the road and also for the first time both teams in the finals so two new teams to these FHSA boys soccer finals I talked to both coaches both young coaches excited to be here it's also unusual because it's of all the games we've had it's the only all west coast matchup yeah, Gulf Coast out of Naples. As you mentioned, Steinbrenner out of Tampa, the Lutes near the Tampa area. You mentioned the head coach at Steinbrenner High School. And he is entering his third, only the fourth year of the program there at Steinbrenner as we are underway. That is Chad Ebright, who's a graduate of USF. And on the other side, Alan Scott, 24 years old, is the head coach in the, of Gulf Coast. So we are underway in the dark blue, navy blue uniforms is Steinbrenner High School and in the white Gulf Coast. Both these teams losing in district finals but going on the road through the regional playoffs. Alan Scott, a graduate of Florida Gulf Coast, 24 years old, actually in his fifth year as the head coach at Gulf Coast. They were regional finalists last year. And again, we mentioned Steinbrenner farthest they made it was the regional semifinals in 2011. So here's Gulf Coast on the attack, but taken away by Steinbrenner's Austin Lavin. And then Lavin has it taken away there by number 12 for Gulf Coast. As that is Sylvester Shushnevich. And a ball out of bounds. Have to, uh, <laughs> bear with me here. The notes are blowing in the wind, much like everything else. The wind is picked up even harder than it was this morning. In the 3A final, Panavidra defeating Plantation American Heritage in that game 2 0. Really windy right now. The sun has been in and out right now. It is not out, but it is partly cloudy skies and a cool with a chilly wind. Steinbrenner takes it away as Blake Wilson, through defenders, still alive, is bumped though by Anthony Flagg and the ball taken away. The defenseman for Gulf Coast and now a run out for the Gulf Coast Sharks. It's Owen McCorkle, number three, battling for it. Now off to Shushnevich. Shushnevich will have it off to the right side. And moving in but losing it there is Rin Van. He slipped down, and Steinbrenner was able to clear it momentarily. Jason Collister will chip it out of bounds. Actually, we'll go off Gulf Coast. So it will be Steinbrenner ball. The Warriors of Steinbrenner and the Sharks of Gulf Coast. Both teams got a lot of fans here today. This is the biggest crowd we've seen out of the first four games. Gulf Coast crowd maybe a little bigger over there. Definitely more vocal, but the Steinbrenner folks are over there wearing white as well. As there's a ball cross field. Kicked over to Cody Lively, who tries to get it off to Logan Sybin. Sybin will cross it, header on. Now another chance. And it is deflected out of bounds. Looks like Derek Gebhardt had a shot there right of the goal. And it will be a corner kick coming up for Steinbrenner, first of the match. Logan Seibin, number 14. We've talked about it all weekend. These, these have been good opportunities. We've seen two goals scored off of these corner kicks. Seibin will... Put the corner kick in. It's short and still deflected. Still in front of the net. Ball still alive. And a long shot from about 25 yards out is way too high by Cody Lively. So a chance there for Lively, but he kicks it way over the goal. And it'll be a... Wow. Whoa. Okay. Well, we just lost our tent. <laughs> Okay, well, looks like everything else is here. 
monitor is down, but uh, it's momentarily. All right, so uh, nice start to this <laughs> match here. <laughs> At least we don't have a piper down. Yep. There we go. Well, there's the sun, so <laughs> we're not cool anymore. All right, back to action here as a kick in by Austin Labin is out of bounds. <laughs> that was definitely the heaviest gust we've had so <laughs> far. We, everything went flying a little bit that time. So uh <laughs> I was afraid we lost the cameraman. No, he's still with us up here, so everything else is fine. Well, it's the last day. It's not going to rain, so we're okay. <laughs> All right, so back to action, Gulf Coast now. As Steinbrenner will take it away against his lively senior defenseman, crosses it over to Sybin. And now Sybin, that's Enrico Barbodo. And we'll have a foul at about the 35 yard line, and that will be a Gulf Coast ball. Lead score for Steinbrenner, Jason Collister with 26 goals. And also 120 shots. Austin Labin with 80 shots, 16 goals. Barboto has 15 goals. Leading assist player Logan Sybin with 16. The goalkeeper for Steinbrenner is number one, Christian Knight. And for Gulf Coast, their leading scorer is Clayton Curvin, number seven. Forward 21 goals, 45 shots. There are 12 goals for Vincenzo Desiano and 10 for Sylvester Shushnevich, who also has 15 assists. Their goalkeeper is number Zero one. Eric Scott is a 6'3 senior. It's kind of similar to the goalie we saw for Pontevedra a little while. And maybe not quite the arms the length of shields. All right, so a little bit of possession at midfield right now. Being fought for by both teams. Cross to Brett Wilcoz. Actually, pardon me, that's Gebhardt. Gebhardt into the corner. Now we'll try a ball over and hit deflected, flicked high in the air. And that'll be an easy save for Eric Scott as the shot was in by Barboto. Really not much of a chance there. And Eric Scott's the younger brother of Coach Allen Scott. Yeah, Coach Allen Scott, again in his fifth year, which means he started coaching on the age of 19 or 20. <laughs> at Gulf Coast. What's amazing is he was telling me this team four years ago when these seniors were freshmen only won two games. There's a foul. Actually, they're going to call that on Gulf Coast. Pants it like that very much. Yeah, you, that's a good point. Actually, in Steinbrenner last year only won five matches. They were 5-15-3 a year ago. Turned it around big time this year. And as you said, the same for Gulf Coast. You're right. They... Uh, 2008, they had three wins. 2009, four wins. When they tell you when you're coming in that you should, as a coach you should have a five-year plan, and it sounds like both these guys had a five-year plan. Chance for a goal, Coast. He's going to flick it over the goalie and in. Gulf Coast on the board, and that is Clayton Curvin. Nice pass ahead to Curvin, and it was one-on-one -on -one with Christian Knight, and Curvin flicked it over the head of Knight, and it's a goal for Gulf Coast. Earliest goal we've seen of any match this week. 32-26 left in the first half. Curvin gives Gulf Coast a one up in lead. That was just a great great composure by Clayton Curvin. He had a big goalkeeper running out at his face, defender at his back, and just calmly chips it over the top. So on the board is Gulf Coast. Early on against Steinbrenner in this 4A state title game. Nice pass ahead. Curvin got between defenders and just chipped it over. Like Christian you, Knight. Like you mentioned, it's the first time we've had game on in the first 10 minutes. I believe that might have, well, the two matches that I've, three matches I've done so far, it's the first goal in the first half we've had. Here's Curvin again. Now on the left side. And he will have it taken away 
by Noah Keen, out of bounds. And a goal kick, it'll be off of Gulf Coast. Coach Alan Scott and his team hoping it stays true that the first goal wins. The first goal wins is won every game in this series so far. Tampa Prep won the 1A state title game on Thursday night, 1-0 over Shekalo Community out of North Miami. The 2A game last night, Jacksonville Bowls over Miami Gulliver Prep, 1-0, a second half goal. And then our 3A match, Ponte Vedra scored two goals early in the second half to defeat Plantation American Heritage 2-0 and win that 3A title. Gulf Coast keeping up the pressure. Steinbrenner will try to clear midfield. And again, there's Steinbrenner. The Warriors, Gephardt. Dribbling in on the right foot, looking for the equalizer, crosses it, got it past Scott. There was nobody there though for Steinbrenner. Now in the right corner is Logan Sybin. Back over to Labin. Austin Labin will try a left footer and he hits that high and wide. Does that deflect it? Yeah, I believe it was. If he's drawing the corner kick on that. Yep, deflection. So a corner kick for Steinbrenner high. And they'd like to draw this game level here right now. You don't want to chase too long. So here is Logan Seiben, 5'9", senior midfielder. 1-0 lead for Gulf Coast in the 4 state title game. Ball in, header is up, and it is still alive, but Scott will come up with it. And we'll have a goal kick. A strong wind to see him blow that thing right back into fair play. That wind again, looks like it's uh, still at the back of Gulf Coast as they head south, down to the south end of the field. Steinbrenner into the wind right now a little bit as that ball is popped up in the air near midfield. Now we'll have Gephardt for Steinbrenner fighting with Rin Van, the midfielder for Gulf Coast. Ball down the field by Josh Rodriguez. Header is up and it's a little high and wide as Jason Collister got under it. He had two defenders on him but he popped it too high in the air. And another goal kick. So Simon is starting to get some opportunities down on their end. I had a chance to talk to Coach Chad Ebright before the game, and he was very relaxed. And I said, you look awfully relaxed, Coach, for your first state final. And he's just <laughs> enjoying it. And he seems still to be enjoying it. Even goal down, he's showing that he's confident in his team and that he believes these boys have the ability to pull it back. Long way to go. Here comes Labin again. Steinbrenner on the attack over to Gephardt. Still 28 and a half minutes left in the first half. Gulf Coast with the early goal as a 1-0 lead. Number 10, Enrico Barboto. Now back to Rodriguez. Rodriguez with a ball in. Scott came out. Ball's alive. Oh. Still alive. C clear for Gulf Coast for a second. And Gephardt now back to Barboto. And Barboto is taken down. No call. We will have a goal kick. Boy, Scott came out and did not control the ball. Came out over an offensive player for Steinbrenner, and he was lucky he didn't get deflected in. And Barboto, he must have watched that Tampa Parrot game and got inspired with that haircut. I don't think I need this credential anymore. That's right, you weren't here for that game. What were you, Marty? <laughs> Which game? The Tampa Prep game. No, I, I somehow missed that one. All the boys came out with mohawks for Tampa <laughs> Prep. All right, sorry there, stand by. This credential is just flapping in my face. So, uh, <laughs> As you can probably guess, we're outside here. <laughs> what would be the visiting stands here at Melbourne High School? McIntyre Stadium, this is soccer football facility, field turf that they have here at Melbourne High. Beautiful facility. First time hosting the FHSA soccer finals. Girls and boys finals are here. Two 40-minute halves for the state title in Class 4A, and if we're tied at the end of regulation, we play two 10-minute overtimes, and the first to score, the Golden Goal wins. If still tied, we'll have penalty kick shootout to decide the state champion. This will be a free kick coming up for Barbodo. Or throw in. Oh, free kick, pardon me. Checking wind speed with his finger there. 
He's going into the wind, I believe. Either way. And ball in. Header in. Oh, just, just wide. Off. I don't know if anyone got a head on it or not. May have just been the free kick all the way in, but just missed left of the goal. It looks like it might just be a matter of time with Steinbrenner on these free kicks. They've been dangerous every time they've been down here and had the opportunity. So goal kick by Scott. Love a foul midfield. It'll be Steinbrenner ball. They have 25 45 left in the first half. And a Gulf Coast goal with 32 minutes to go in the opening half by. Clayton Curvin is giving the Sharks a 1-0 lead. Ball in. Ball alive. Kept alive. A lot of contact again. Steinbrenner player is down. Sit up slowly in front of the goal. Ball back out towards midfield. Yeah, goal there. Eric Scott did a great job of coming into a crowd and getting that thing out of danger. Barbodo now Collister. Now back to Blake Wilson. Wilson had it deflected back out. And now here comes a counter with Andre de Grief. And we will have a push. And a foul on Steinbrenner. So a free kick coming up. Here's another one of those set pieces you talk about, Coach. Yeah, especially with this wind howling at your back, that thing's going to come in there pretty quick. 40, about 41 yards from goal. This will be taken as Steinbrenner will substitute for 15. Zachary Yerish in the game. Yerish. And for the first time, here comes the sun. Oh, that was a song once. Wind is just howling away. You can probably definitely hear it on the microphones. Ball in by Wilcox, pardon me, by uh, Shustovich. It's headed out. And that will, again, be a throw-in for Gulf Coast. Miguel Hernandez will throw it, try to get it into the corner, and he throws it too far. There the wind got behind that one, and it just sails out of bounds into the corner over the head of Andre de Grief. I realize this referee on the near side is Mike Aronson. An assistant principal at Pahokee High. Okay. To be a head coach at Wellington High School. Up in uh, Palm Beach County area. Nice guy. Stolen away at midfield by Gulf Coast. Tyler Burnett, number five. Chipped in by Ren Van. And then it's cut off. But a shot on high and wide by Burnett, the midfielder. Boy, he took a chance from about 30 yards out. And that ball sailed high and right of the goal. He got all of that one. That was screaming off his foot. <laughs> but too high, too wide. So it'll be a goal kick again, this time for Steinbrenner's Christian Knight. Junior goalkeeper, 6-1. At .69 average with 65 saves in 13 games. Nine goals allowed. He's allowed one here in the first half. Fight at midfield. Steinbrenner tried to get it, and it ends up instead with Shushnovich, and heads the other way to Kervin. Here's Kervin again in the middle of the field. Dangerous part, but he has it taken away. Good play by Josh Rodriguez, and the defense keeps it away, but now back out. Tarek Santiago for Gulf Coast. Uh, booted in by Miguel Hernandez, trying to get into the corner, and it'll instead head out of bounds. Another goal kick coming up for Steinbrenner. It's unusual that he's calling this water break with yeah. 23 left. I don't know if we're yeah. a little off on the clock. or Yeah, it's usually after the 20-minute mark or under. This is 23.02 to go in the first half. We'll take the water break. And uh, it's probably not too bad of a day. We talked about this earlier. It's windy and cool, but the sun's out. This has got to be a nice day to play soccer instead of being out of the heat and humidity we normally have in Florida. 
I think they like the cool weather. I think they'd be a little bit happy if it wasn't so windy. Yeah. That is affecting the ball so far as Gulf Coast leads it one nothing on that goal by Kervin. A nice one-on-one -on -one play. Clayton Kervin is able to chip it up and over the goalie, Christian Knight. Right about 20, 15, 20 yards out for the first goal of the game. The game, the pace, we saw in the other games that the pace settled down after a while once the nerves burned off, but we were also at 0-0, and this, this game has not settled down. Both teams are still getting after it 17 minutes in or 20 minutes in. Yeah, our 1A champion crowned Thursday night, Tampa Prep, on that one nothing over Check Hello Community, North Miami Beach. 2A final last night, the Bulls School at Jacksonville. Got a second half goal and defeated Miami Gulliver Prep 1-0. Gulliver Prep played a man down for the last 60 minutes of the match due to a red card. And then earlier this morning in our 3A championship game, American Heritage Plantation missed a penalty kick the final minute of the first half and then player got a second yellow card the first 10 minutes of the second half. Panavita scored two goals in about four minutes and won that match at 3-8, 2-0 over American Heritage. First Boys State title, Panavita High School. Congratulations to them. And now we're going to have a new champion in 4A. One of these two will win their first Boys Soccer State Championship as well. Steinbrenner out of Lutz in Tampa and Gulf Coast from Naples. Neither team has ever appeared in a state championship match. One of the benefits of doing this job is you get to talk to all these coaches, and when you talk to them, you understand why these guys are where they are. Knowledgeable, very good with their kids. Well, we've seen some uh, veteran coaches like Jim Leiva Bowles won his second state title in 14 years, but you mentioned earlier these are two guys that are Chad Ebride. He's 40 years old, but he's only been coaching for four years, and Alan Scott's 24, only been coaching five years, so these guys are pretty young in the coaching profession. Very successful in their respective schools. Quick ball downfield by Shushnovich trying to get it to degree if it's headed out by Steinbrenner. It'll be a throw in for the Sharks of Gulf Coast. Owen McCorkle, number three. Ball in and headed in, still alive, but cleared by Steinbrenner. Headed back in by Rodriguez, but he heads it, or Hernandez, but he heads it out of bounds. Well, looking behind us, I believe that tent may have seen its last day. Yeah, bit the frame. Well, that's something to look at behind us here. It's not often that you're sitting under one of those, it just goes flying off. <laughs> But it, the, the remainder of it is sitting behind us uh, down under the stands here. All right, back to action. Here's Gebhardt. Derek Gebhardt crosses through. Nice play, but he misses. Didn't get a lot on it between defenders. Misses wide right of the goal. It'll be a goal kick. Gebhardt, he he's thinking about further in his career over there at Florida Gulf Coast University. She can talk to uh, Coach Scott about that on Florida Gulf Coast. Over on the Gulf Coast High School side. Here's Kervin again. Boy, he is quick. Through the middle of the field. Oh, he's bumped right there. Stays with the ball, though. Gephardt takes away. Then he's tripped. He's going to get a yellow for that and one. We're going to get a card. I think Kervin got a little frustrated. And he does pick up a yellow. Kervin got bumped by Blake Wilson. Went down. Got up. As Gephardt took it away and trips Gephardt, and Kervin with the yellow card will have to come out. As Derek Gephardt across the field. The referee really issues that yellow card with enthusiasm. He does it quickly, He runs too. it right down and wastes no time. So Vincenzo Desanio will check in. That's going to be, that's going to hurt. Go. Gulf Coast here a little bit. You know, we saw what happened when the other kid had a yellow card. He ended up having to leave the game when he got his second. So Kervin's going to have to play a little bit more tentatively when he comes back, or he may find his team a man down. All in, and there's another foul. Whoa. We're going to have another yellow card, and you're right. <laughs> it's 
Very emphatic that time. It's going to be Sylvester Shushnevich. Yeah. He picks up the yellow right in the middle of the field near the 30. So this is going to be a free kick about 38 yards out. And Shushnevich will have to come out. Referee wastes no time and shows it right to the player. So now a kick coming up for Barbodo. Shushnevich, one of the better players too for Gulf Coast. You hate to see that. Carlos Paz will check in for the first time for the Gulf Coast Sharks. We approach 20 minutes to go first half. Ball in, headed back out. Steinbrenner will keep it alive as Barboto pops it up and then headed back towards midfield and it will be a Steinbrenner throw in. Seibin will throw it in quickly. Now Labin back to Seibin. Seibin in the corner, he'll cross. Looking for Gephardt, but over Gephardt's head. That took a flyer that time. Now Gephardt will retrieve. Back to the middle of the field. Ball in deflected on Collister. In by Collister again, but it's easily handled by Eric Scott. Not a lot of with the left leg there for Collister. Headed up by Will Cause. Arboto with the uh, has a mohawk going, as you said. I guess you said Tampa Prep with the Mohawks, huh? Yeah. Arboto's got a nice one going himself there, number 10 for Steinbrenner. Now to Gephardt. Gephardt again to the corner. Ball deflected out, and that will be a corner. Nope, actually still alive. But it ends up going off. Anytime that ball comes up the left side, it seems like Gephardt finds it, no matter where it is. But he'll try the. Actually, they're going to bring over Seibin to try the corner kick. Another set piece opportunity. For Steinbrenner. Trails at 1 nothing, Just past the halfway mark of the first half. Ball is low, almost on the ground. Barbodo comes up with it. He'll try one, but it's high and well wide of the goal. Goal kick for Gulf Coast. Steinbrenner lost the district championship game to Tampa Sickles 2 to 1 in the regional tournament. They went on the road, beat Ridge Community 7 to 1. Really got it going then over. Uh, six to one over Lake Ridge and in region three to one over Pine Ridge, and in the state semifinals, defeated Ocala Forest four to three. And on the other side, Gulf Coast lost their district championship two to one in April's Baron Collier, but then the regional tournament beat Lakewood Ranch four to one, won a rematch with Baron Collier one nothing, two to one over Seminole, and then the state semifinals six to one over Fort Lauderdale. So the champions of region two, Steinbrenner. Champions of Region 3, Gulf Coast. Both were district runners up. That's not something you see every day. We did have a team last night, Gulliver Prep, that was a district runner up as well. Here we go the other way now with Gulf Coast. It's Desiano. Desiano in the corner. And then it's deflected away by Steinbrenner as that wind picks up again. Rodriguez and Brett Wilcaws over there. And they'll send it deep the other way. Hernandez will try one, and that goes straight out of bounds. Hanging on to that monitor over there, huh? Looks. He's going to get out my scotch tape, see if that helps. <laughs> Ball in for Steinbrenner. Here's Labin. Labin backwards with the left foot. And now we'll back it up. Good job of being patient, bringing a defender into the attack. Nice switch of the point of attack, too. Real cause across to Yerish, middle of the field, and there's Gulf Coast foul. We'll have a free kick again for Steinbrenner. This will be Barbodo. Barbodo, this is about 40 yards out, right in the middle of the field. Ball in, it's high, but right into the hands of Scott. We talked about in our first match today the importance of a goalie, Kevin Shields, 6-3 for Ponte Vedra, but the wingspan is just maybe 6-7, six, 6-8. Six, Eric Scott is listed at 6-3. He's not as long <laughs> as you can say his Shields. No, Shields looked like he was pushing seven foot. 
Evan Shields will be playing for the Division II National Champions, Lynn University, next year. Here's Steinbrenner on the attack. Here's Labin. Now back tap to himself. Tries to get through. Nice movement there. Labin ball in is deflected. Oh, and Scott had to come out. And that ball actually deflected out of bounds. I think it went off of Owen McCorkle, number three. So we'll have a corner kick coming up for Steinbrenner. Wild deflection, and Scott had to come out. So we'll have a Steinbrenner corner kick again. So another opportunity for the Warriors. Down a goal with 15.40 left first half. Seibin in. You're saying that ball bent out of bounds and then came back inbounds. Ah. Well, that wind again. Who knows? So goal kick again for Eric Scott. Headed out at midfield by Burnett. Steinbrenner ball. Steinbrenner has been on the attack more recently than Gulf Coast, especially after falling behind the goal. Seibin to Labin. Labin had it taken away. Santiago, there's the steal in the midfield. Wilson had it, but then booted the other way. Uh, both teams, nice play there by Carlos Paz. Oh. Play on here is Santiago. Across to Burnett. They're positioned at midfield right now. Both teams, by the way. Whoa, both teams. Uh, you can feel <laughs> that there. tackle. That was right in front of us. Santiago took it away. Santiago now back taps backwards. Here's a shot coming up. On. Oh, what, oh. what a goal by Rin Van. That's 35, 40 yards out. He took a shot. And it looked all along like Christian Knight couldn't tell where it was going. And there's your wind again. That carries right into the goal. And it's a 2 0 lead. For Gulf Coast. Now you just you just can't give somebody that kind of time. And give credit to Santiago. He took the ball away right at midfield from Seibin. They were battling. He went the other way, back tapped to Van, and Van knocked it in. So a goal for Kervin at 32 26, and a goal by Ren Van 14 of 7 in the first half. It's 2 0 for the Gulf Coast Sharks in this 4A state championship game. Well, the Sharks at Ponavidra won in 3A, maybe another group of Sharks trying to win here in 4A. And I think that goal by Van rivals the goal that we saw from Parado. His best goal of the tournament so far. And Parado had a heck of a goal in the first match for Panavidra to get them on the board with the left foot. Goal kick for Knight. So now Steinbrenner. And again, there's still a lot of time. You got 13 and a half left first half. And you're even up, so there's no advantage or disadvantage as far as red cards or really all the cards at this point. Gulf Coast it's taken away momentarily. Simon lost the ball. Here's Kervin near midfield. And he will cross it again to Van. Van back to Kervin. Gulf Coast trying to get on the run again. Back to Burnett. Burnett into the corner and that is going to be too far away. I think he was looking to bend that with his right foot, but just didn't quite wrap around it. Trying to get it to Carlos Paz. So a throw in for Steinbrenner. Battle on the sideline. And he'll award Steinbrenner a throw in. So two goals in the first half. For Gulf Coast. Wilson back to Keene. Keene in the midfield to Wilson again as Steinbrenner now. We approached 12 minutes to go in the first half. And again, no reason to panic quite yet, but chasing two is always harder than chasing one. Yep, and you're, you're right. They have not panicked. They're still knocking the ball, keeping possession, trying to create opportunities. Oh, header there big time now ahead and a try here's a chance for Labin ball is still alive and then taken away 
Lava didn't even know the ball was right behind him, I think. It looked like he never got a foot on it. Deflected out by Gulf Coast, and it will be a Gulf Coast throw-in. Good move by Collister that time. Started that play, and Austin Lava looked like he had an opportunity. So a throw-in for Gulf Coast. Booted way downfield that time by Noah Keene. Into the corner, and ball out of bounds. We'll have a... Goal kick. Wind picking up again here at Melbourne High School. It's supposed to be a chilly afternoon and evening in most of Florida. It's supposed to get down to the 20s and 30s tonight. No matches tonight, which is nice. We'll Lucky, to, nice to be out here in the afternoon in the sun, even though the wind makes it a little cool, but it's a nice afternoon. Otherwise, no rain in the forecast as it was Thursday night for the 1A match. Which, uh, Kelly Neff, my friend, had to go through along with Coach Carswell. <laughs> and he reminded me, so. <laughs> here we go, Kervin again. Kervin in behind defense. again. Going to be trouble and Kervin. Oh, nice play. Though. That's a handball. That's That may be a red card for the goalkeeper. Oh, uh, did he put a oh, the handball, huh? I he was outside it. the box. Uh, was outside the box, and he gets a yellow. So, yes, Christian Knight gets the yellow card. I don't know if they called. Now, interestingly enough, you're right. He was outside the box. I thought he made a nice play to come out and deflect it, but they called the handball. Kervin got through, but that touch just got away from him a little bit. Now Knight talking to his coach on the sideline. Hey, that's going to be. They're going to have to bring in Zeeland Shannon. As we will have a penalty kick. Or no, pardon me, a free kick. But that's a dangerous place there. About 19 yards out. Dangerous place for kick, and I'm surprised you know, he could have given that as a red card. Thought they might have a penalty kick there at first, yeah, but it will be a free kick there for Sylvester Shushnovich and boy, Clayton Kerman is causing all kinds of problems for Steinbrenner's defense. Yeah, he's got a second level of speed, that kid. He got past Noah Keen that time. Here we go. In by Shushnovich. Ball deflected. Still in front of the net, and it's saved. Good play there by Shannon. That's a good job by the keeper, you know. Shannon quick. just coming off the bench. Yeah, yeah quick initiation into the game. Comes and up with a big play. A lot of action in front of the net. The ball was being deflected around, but it's saved. So a goal kick coming up. Actually, Shannon will allow Keene to take the goal kick. Well, Steinbrenner dodges that bullet, but they're still down two. Under 10 minutes to go here in the first half. There's Josh Rodriguez. Seibin. Dribbles around, now towards the middle of the field. Now defenders, nice run, but it's cut off there by Hernandez. And Santiago will kick it out of bounds off a Steinbrenner player. So it's a throw in for Gulf Coast. All through, and it ends up with Austin Labin. Now Labin back to Wilson. Labin again. He gets through, and then it's kicked out of bounds off of Anthony Flagg, the defender. Oh, he's doing a good job beating that first defender. Just can't sneak by the second defender. If he does, though, it's going to be dangerous. We'll have a throw in coming up. Ball in from Seibin. Back out to Seibin on the side. Ball in, and it will curve backwards. Gephardt will try one. It's deflected out. Kept alive by Barbodo in the middle of the field. Trying to battle through defenders. Instead, cleared. Not quite by Gulf Coast. Now cleared. And here come. But Steinbrenner takes it away. Barbodo cross to Gephardt. Can't quite get it through. Ends up with Sushnovich. Now back to Gephardt. Gephardt, nice move. Trying to get to the corner. Gephardt is still alive with the ball. Now back he goes to 
Blake Wilson, but it's taken away by Gulf Coast. Now back out comes Steinbrenner. Long ball coming in. The field goal is good, but the shot is too high by Cody Lively. Well over the crossbar, and again, that's into the wind, and Lively's kick still well too high. So a chance for Steinbrenner goes high that time for Cody Lively. Defenseman, number, defense player, number 5'9", senior. So another goal kick. Steinbrenner will try to start another attack. Again, they get a goal before half. You're right back in it. Seven minutes to go. First half down two. They can get one before the half, though. That will definitely improve the outlook for the second half for the Steinbrenner Warriors. Yeah, they definitely want to get try to get one before the half. Get part of that ball is deflected out of bounds. They probably like to get two for that matter. <laughs> All in from Yarish, deflected back into the Gulf Coast defensive area. Oh, ball deflected there as well. As Lavin came over to contest Hernandez. Head it up, head it up again. This battle there on the sideline between Seipen. This Kervin is down. Here comes Burnett the other way, but it's taken away again by Derek Gephardt. Two Gephardt. Put. Gephardt. Gephardt. Running through the defenders. To Barbodo and Kervin. Pardon me, not Kervin. That ball is kept alive, though, by Gephardt. And that ball deflected again. Here comes Gulf Coast. And then DeGrief loses it. Slides, takes the ball away. Good tackle. Keep the, keep the play alive. Kervin to DeGrief. Here's a chance again. Got Kervin coming. Coast. And Kervin can't quite get to that ball over the corner. Andre DeGrieff tried to get it back to him. 5.20 to go, first half. Substitution for Steinbrenner. Michael Connell, number 16, replaces Logan Sivan. You mentioned, uh, Scott, that he play, his father, Michael Connell, played for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Yes, he did. He used to be one of my favorite players when I was a little kid. The North American Soccer League, Tampa Bay Rowdies. Middle of the field, Barbodo. And we will have Powell coming up against Gulf Coast. Four twenty and counting, first half. Barbodo deflected away. Gulf Coast trying to keep the pressure on even with a two goal lead. Paz cannot cross it over to flag. Steinbrenner goes backwards. Keen now across to Rodriguez. Rodriguez trying to get it into the corner in the area near Labin. Pardon me, over to Collister. And it will be a Gulf Coast throw in. Five left. Throw in, gets caught in the wind. Boy, look at the wind take that ball sideways. Here's Kervin, he's in the middle again. Dribbles to his right, trying to get something started. Click on, and then the grief has it now back. 
Try to get it back to Burnett, and he has it taken away. And now a steal back by Shustovich. That's time Brenner will kill that attack. And you can see both coasts putting on the pressure as much as they can. They are not stopping up two goals. Trying to get one into Kerman, and it ends up back there with Keen. And now a takeaway to Grief. Middle of the field, Desiano. Desiano will try a shot. It's deflected and easily taken. Saved by Christian Knight, who is back in after getting the yellow card earlier. Goal kick coming up for Knight and Steinbrenner. Down two goals. He kicks that one into the wind. You got a lot on that for kicking that thing into the wind. He knocked that thing about 50 yards. Ball deflects out of bounds off Gulf Coast. Steinbrenner now with a minute. And 35 to try and get a goal here. As they will substitute Brett Wilcaus back in for Cody Lively. I wonder if the Steinbrenner staff saw something on this near side and moved Gephardt over to this side. We saw him working the left flank all game. Now he's going to have a go at the right. Rodriguez back. And Steinbrenner trying to get set heading in the backfield here. Now with Rodriguez. You have a minute 25 now in the middle of the field. Now to Labin. Labin dribbles with the left foot and had it taken away. And then Labin will get called for the foul as he had the ball taken away and tried to take it back. He gets called for the foul. So Gulf Coast will throw it in. A free kick. And with about a minute to go, they can take as much time as they want. Quick throw in there. Looks like they're going to try and Add one more, though, before the half. Here's Kervin trying to get through the defense, and it's kicked backwards by Tijerish. And that goes off the head of Santiago. So Steinbrenner with a throw in, 40 seconds left. And maybe one more attack for them here in the first half. There's Will Cause. Back to Wilson. Wilson had it taken away. But taken right back by Blake Wilson. 20 seconds left. Kicked near midfield. And it looks like Santiago now back. Gulf Coast with 10 seconds. That out of bounds. That's going to pretty much end the first half. It's five seconds. Gulf Coast will not. I don't even think they're going to attempt to throw in. They do, but that will be the horn doesn't sound for some reason. <laughs> the clock says zero. We're playing on, but the horn is not sounded. There's usually a horn here, but that's how they didn't have it. And then the whistle blows. <laughs> so that is the end of the first half. Gulf Coast gets on the board early. Two goals. 32-26 left in the first half. Clayton Kerbin gets on the scoreboard. And then with 14.07 to go, it was... Rin Van with a goal, and at the half of this 4A state championship game, it's Gulf Coast 2 and George Steinbrenner nothing. We will take a break. We'll come back into the second half. Marty Palm along with Coach Scott Carswell back on the FHSA Network for the second half in about eight minutes.
whatever you're doing.
All right, welcome back to Melbourne High School here at McIntyre Stadium. Marty Palm along with Scott Carswell, the head girls soccer coach at Merritt Island High School, as we welcome you to the 4A State Championship. We welcome you back here on the FHSA Network from Melbourne High School, the 2013 FHSA Boys Soccer Championships, and Naples Gulf Coast leading George Steinbrenner 2 to nothing as we head to the second half. So, Coach, if, uh, any, what kind of adjustments would you make if you're Coach uh, Ebright and the Steinbrenner Warriors? Playing well and composed. I think, you know, defensively, I think they just need to make sure they always have somebody in cover and somebody picking up on Kervin. Anytime Clayton Kervin gets that ball, he's been able to get into the space and go one on one with the goalkeeper. Yeah, I guess. It, sorry, go ahead. So I'd make that adjustment. But other than that, you know, they've been very composed. That's Two right. nothing's definitely not an insurmountable lead. Well, we can't really start the game without the referees. So here they come. <laughs> and the players are on the field. Now on the Gulf Coast side, for the Gulf Coast Sharks, and Coach Allen Scott, you've had a good first half. You scored two goals quickly, and I guess the, the key is just keep the pressure on and see if you can get as many as you can and really put a stranglehold on this championship game. Yeah, you know, you got to keep doing what you're doing, stay focused. You don't get a championship ring for winning the first half of the game, and that's what they just need to stay focused to play another 40 minutes. Again for Gulf Coast in the first half. Two goals, one by Clayton Kerbin, number seven. That came with 32-26 to go in the half. The second by number 17, Ren Van, on a lovely shot about 35, 40 yards out with 14.07 to go first half. Nice well-played goal. So Gulf Coast leads 2 to nothing as, again, the wind pretty steady here in Melbourne this afternoon. One more game in these boys' soccer finals come up this afternoon. We'll kick off at 4.05 in the 5A state championship game between Weston Cypress Bay and West Orange out of Winter Garden. That's coming up this afternoon here on the FHSA Network, and that will wrap up FHSA soccer finals for 2013. Girls finals here at Melbourne High School last weekend. The first year the finals have been held here in Melbourne. We're at the University of Tampa, the University of South Florida last year, and Lockhart Stadium in Fort Lauderdale in the past. I'm not sure. This may be the first time the state finals have been held on an artificial surface. Yeah, the field turf. Nice surface here at Melbourne High School. And we mentioned yesterday, Scott, that a lot of teams play on this surface now. And I don't know if that's the case for these two schools. We knew Bowles and Gulliver Prep play on it. Two teams who played in the 2A final last night. I'm not sure about Mass Steinbrenner. Surface. Coach Scott said all the teams in Collier County play on turf fields. Seen that a lot more especially in south and central Florida. i tell you where I live up north Florida, northeast Florida, not as many bowls as one of them that does have field turf. So a lot of grass fields up in that area. Here's Barbado. Oh, ball in. And a sidekick. And what happened there is Wilson. Oh. That's silly. He's going to get a yellow card for that. And that... There's a yellow card on the goalie, Eric Scott. He got a little emotional there as the free kick was in by Barboto. Blake Wilson got a side of his foot on it and hit it into the hands of Scott, but he was... And they don't appear to have a second goalkeeper even ready. Scott got into it with his uh, one of the Steinbrenner players. Josh Holcomb is listed as the goalie number zero. And by the way, of course, when your brother is a coach, like Alan <laughs> Scott is, and you're going to have to answer to your brother. <laughs> It's not often you see both goalies get yellow card and have to leave the game. Yeah, yellow card on Christian Knight in the first half for Steinbrenner. And now a yellow coming on Eric Scott of Gulf Coast. So here comes a corner kick for Michael Connell, number 16. Everybody lines up, left-footed kick coming in. Good ball, a little high, chance for a header, and ball still alive, and it's saved. There's a nice play by Josh Holcomb. So here comes your backup goalie, and right away he's tested. He makes the play. Yeah, both backup goalies have come in and had to make big plays right off the bat. We saw Zeeland Shannon come in for Steinbrenner in the first half and make a save off the free kick. 
You got to feel good for those kids and make those saves. You know, one minute you're on the bench, re relaxing, watching the game, and 30 seconds later you're shocked into <laughs> having to go out there and make a save. Looks like Eric Scott's going to check in here again pretty quickly as soon as we have a chance to do that. Steinbrenner, though, on the move. Steinbrenner coming out aggressive here in the second half. Barboto over to Gebhard. Gebhard again into the corner. Gebhard battling there with Sustovich, and we will have a foul on Steinbrenner. It's going to be on Gebhard. This will be a free kick coming up for Gulf Coast. So just three minutes into the second half, Gulf Coast with two First half goals leading Steinbrenner four nothing or four nothing, pardon me, two nothing in this four A state championship game. They're not, they're not gonna let him come in. Huh? It's not their throw and. No. Oh. Good point. Almost got dangerous because the backup keeper was almost off the field. <laughs> he thought he was out. <laughs> you had enough. Here's Gebhard. He's got a chance. Oh, nice takeaway there, though. And that'll be out off Gulf Coast. Sun in and out this afternoon. The wind has been steady. As this time of the second half, Steinbrenner is going with the wind. Shushnovich did a good job of blocking that ball out so they couldn't keep it in and giving them the opportunity to get their starting keeper back in the game. So a free kick again for Gulf Coast. Both these teams, district runners up, went on the road in the regional playoffs. And also... Where else these teams in for the first time in a state championship game in boys soccer. I don't know if you saw that. Josh Holcomb came out and got a few attaboys there from his coaches and his teammates. We're not giving up any goals while he was in. <laughs> Scott makes the save this time. And Steinbrenner was on the road every game except for the state semifinal. They did host Ocala Forest and won that match. I was talking to Coach E. Bright. He said they're going to change the name to the Road Warriors. <laughs> now, Gulf Coast did go on the road for every match. So, you're right. Steinbrenner did have one home match, at least, which they won in two overtimes in the state semifinal over Forest 4 3. Ball in deep. Now back out. Against Steinbrenner on the attack. Barboto has it taken away, though. And then a lot of contact. No call there. And then we do have a late call coming up as Connell went down right in the midfield and we'll have a foul against Tyler Burnett of Gulf Coast. So here comes another free kick opportunity. This will happen about 45 yards out for Enrique Barboto. We saw one not too much closer in by Rin Van. There's one coming in at that. Oh, and just over Eric Scott and also just over the head of Trying to head that one in was Noah Keene. Yeah, he was flying through the air. Just missed him as well. Actually, that was Wilson, pardon me, Blake Wilson, number nine. I like to see that kind of hustle out of a kid trying to make something happen. So a goal kick again for Gulf Coast, continuing to lead it by two in our 4A state championship match. 1A, it was Tampa Prep winning the state title, one nothing over... Shekalo Community out of North Miami Beach. In 2A was a goal score from Jacksonville. Community Miami Gulliver Prep won nothing. And in 3A this morning, Ponte Vedra defeated American Heritage Plantation 2-0. There's a, another foul. Gulf Coast will have a free kick as they head the other way. And it in. Kerman may have another chance. Boy, nice slide and a kick out by Wilcos. Otherwise, Kerman was going to be one on one again with Christian Knight. He continues to wreak havoc in the Steinbrenner defensive end. 
should be a free kick coming up. Both coast. Throw in. That will be number three, Owen McCorkle, to throw it in again. Long throw in. Oh, ball just passed Christian Knight and passed the goal. Nobody touched it. And it will be a goal kick for Steinbrenner. <laughs> Good crowd. A lot of folks here from Gulf Coast and from Steinbrenner sit next to each other and they're mocking each other with a we can't hear you chant. It's a ball the other way. It's going to be headed back towards Knight and he will take care of it. As Desiano tried to put some pressure. You hear that wind. Pretty good kick with the wind that time. There's Steinbrenner trying to get something on the move here, but instead it ends up on the foot of Miguel Hernandez. Now stolen back by the Warriors. Down to Labin, and Labin had it knocked out of bounds off of the Gulf Coast player. Cross field to Wilcaz. Will cause it to Barbodo. Barbodo had it taken away, but another whistle, and we'll have foul ball head the other way. Gulf Coast will have a free kick. Booted down the other side of the field, but then. Steinbrenner, Noah Keen will hit it high the other way. Kicked back by Rim Van. Now both teams kind of jockeying for position in midfield. It ends up with Van. Now Van will send it down to Desiano. Desiano tries to cross it. It's cleared momentarily, but now back out to Andre de Grief. De Grief with a left foot. Dribbles back and now back to. Shushnovich. Shushnovich sends a ball in. High ball. Kerman coming in. And Knight able to make the save. Just missed getting it on the head of Clayton Kerman there. Again. And Knight will boot it the other way. Taken away by Van. He will send it down the other side of the field, but it's knocked back by Keane. Now Kerbin, near midfield, takes it away. Steinbrenner back with Blake Wilson down the middle of the field. Off to Labin. Nice turn by Labin. And unable to get it through that time was Barbodo. Now Van crosses it. De Grief almost forgot the ball. Shushnovich now to the middle of the field. Forward to Kervin again. Nice play there by Wilcoz to take it away from Steinbrenner again. Team's kind of slowing down a little bit right now. A lot of play being made in midfield. Still a 2-0 lead for Gulf Coast on two first half goals. One by Kervin, one by Van. Three players go down on the ground in the middle of the field. <laughs> they all quickly get up, and the ball went up down on the other side for a goal kick. Coach Aaron Scott. Coach Scott just telling his team, settle down, calm down, keep the ball on the floor. Right now, uh, this having the ball down at that end is not such a bad thing. Gulf Coast kind of keeping it in the middle of the field right now. Another goal scoring opportunities came by through direct play in the first half, but they're having a little bit harder time Long with that ball. direct ball in the into the wind. Gebhardt was off sides. Collister tried to head it down to Gebhardt and he was off sides. So another free kick coming up for the Gulf Coast Sharks. And you're right, their two goals were not offset pieces. <laughs> Vans was a rip from about 40, 35, 40 yards out. He 
saw the goal last night off a set piece for Bowles. One of the goals from Panavidra in the three game came up a set piece as well. Cross it to Yerish. Again, Starmutter needs to. And there again, no panic right now for the Warriors. They're just kind of playing their game, trying to get some passes going. They still have a lot of time, but are down two. Hollister battling over there with Van. Now the middle of the field tried to get it to Gephardt. Said it was kicked by Flag down the other way. Yerish near the sideline. Ball goes out of bounds. And it looks like a, a row in. First time when Gulf Coast will bring in Carlos Paz, number 11. Out comes Vincenzo Desiano, number 9. This is the first game back for Desiano in quite a while. He's been out with a broken toe. it seems in this match so they're so having to chat with Santiago I'm not sure what that was about yeah I just noticed that too as the crowd was chanting Eric over there for Santiago throw in quickly now by Yerish ball will be kicked out of bounds by Steinberg. Kind of a little bit of a lull here, it seems like. <laughs> Both teams are, neither team can seem to get much of a offensive charge. And now Kervin did get through and he was fouled. So there you go. Gulf Coast will have a free kick. And this is always Dangerous to the other teams in your Steinbrenner. 30, about 39, 39 yards out from goal. Looks like they will have Shustovich to try it. Number 12. High ball in. Ball is alive and then still alive. Shot is wide. Cuts into the corner. And saved, and then Kerbin goes down. We'll play on. Looks like Kerbin was fishing for a foul, no call. Ball on the sideline. Now with it comes Connell. Good chance there for Gulf Coast. Just couldn't get a foot on the ball. Now Sybin. Back to Yerish. Steinbrenner can get a run going here. No, oh, instead it's kicked to Van. And then they start the other way. Tree back by Keane. Keane forward to Simon. No, Simon loses it there. Somebody would be down there, but they weren't. It'll be another goal kick for Christian Knight. At the water, you know, probably at the water break here, Steinbrenner's going to have to make some decisions because I don't know that possessing the ball in the midfield here right now is going to win them this game. You're going to have to compose your work, but now you're going to have to try something a little different if you're going to try to bring this game back. Yeah, it looks like the player is pretty tired on the field for Steinbrenner. A lot of hands on knees. Uh, energy being expended. Twenty-four minutes approaching that to go in the second half. Gulf Coast continually two nothing in this four A state championship game. Marty Palmer along with Coach Scott Carswell. We're live from Melbourne High School at Tom McIntyre Stadium, home of the Melbourne Bulldogs. The 2013 FHSA Boys Soccer Finals here on the FHSA Network. As Gulf Coast in the white leads Steinbrenner in the dark blue, 2 0. Navy blue now Steinbrenner. Keep 
keeping it alive. Barbodo balls high in the air. Headed the other way by Gold Coast. And Barbodo back with it. Camp Hart now across to Yarish. Yarish back on the foot of Blake Wilson. Wilson in the middle of the field. Now backs up to Gephardt, back to Wilson. And Wilson goes down. Yarish ball high in the air and in. Fought for, and Scott comes up with it. Collister tried to get in there for Steinbrenner, and Eric Scott able to make the stop. Goal kick back towards midfield. Now try for Gulf Coast. Loss from Burnett to DeGrief. Grief trying to get it to Kervin instead ends up with Garish. Gephard now plays it back to Sybin. Now across the field to Gephard again. Arboto had it taken away from him and we'll have a foul and a free kick for Gulf Coast. Yeah, I think you may be right. Steinbrenner looks like they're getting tired out there. You know, they're not closing balls down fast enough. They're not getting into the attack fast enough. You got to really push it here in these last 20 minutes coming up. Headed back by Will Cause. Those defenders got to get out faster. Headed up by Collister. Gebhard had it knocked away. And cleared again by Gulf Coast, but now in the middle of the field. Wilson, Gephardt, back to Wilson. Wilson tripped and he lost it. Now back at midfield again. Will Cause will keep it in the offensive end for Steinbrenner. Garish is tripped up and we will have a foul and a yellow card. And that'll go against Michael, or pardon me, uh, Number 11, Carlos Paz for Gulf Coast. So he'll get a yellow. So Desiano will come back in with 21 34 to go as we approach the second half runner run. Free kick in for Noah Keane, number eight. Ball high coming in and right at Eric Scott. Again, that wind at the back, and that ball was high. And just kept sailing, but it goes right into the hands of Scott. Connell coming back in. I saw him come up and chuck his cleat off. I thought he was angry, but he must have had a problem with his cleats. Looks like he's coming in with a different set of cleats on. And that will bring us to the water break, I believe. I thought I heard him call for it, but actually nobody's leaving the field. Clock stopped at 2107 to go, second half. Oh, we're gonna play on. Not sure what the stop and zero was for. Here goes the wind again. Oh boy. <laughs> it's the biggest gust we've had since the tent went over in the first half. <laughs> and now we'll have a foul across the way near the sideline. Slow to get up over there. So Gulf Coast will have a free kick for Shushnovich. High ball into the wind, headed up. And now Steinbrenner will start and run the other way. Blake Wilson across the gap hard, now to Wilson. Back to Wilson in the middle of the field. Wilson to Labin. Labin had it knocked away. Nice slide there by Connell, kept it alive, and Gulf Coast will clear it the other way. On to Daciano, but taken away by Yerish. Yerish tries to cross it. It ends up with Josh Rodriguez. Here's Barbodo. Labin plus to Barbodo. And Barbodo had it taken away by a couple of defenders. Yerish across to Labbit. Hey, hey, hey. 
Grab him between defenders. Nice run to the corner. And it looked like he may have pushed the defender there, McCorkle. And I believe that was the call. Labin trying to get to the ball, pushed over McCorkle. Referee is talking it over with Austin Labin. That will bring us to the water break. 19-21 left in the second half. Gulf Coast leads Steinbrenner 2-0. Referee's still talking to Lavin about that play. Did see a card, though. So. All right, so at this point, <laughs> if you're Coach E. Bright, now what do you do? <laughs> what kind of changes can you make here to get two goals in 19 minutes and tie this up for three to win? And they already play a pretty attacking formation with a 4-3-3, which you, know, you almost got to take somebody off the back line or, or get those guys coming forward harder. But with the game that Kervin's having up top, I'd be a little, little scared to leave all my defenders isolated 1v1 with him. see again Gulf Coast scored the two goals in the first half and right now they're pretty much in control of this match 2-0 the score referees talking over with some of the Gulf Coast player now players now should be a goal kick coming up for Eric Scott coach Chad Ebright he's talking there with Jason Collister Collister had a hat trick in the region final Maybe you can pull some of that magic out in the last 20 minutes here. All right, so Eric Scott will put us back into play with a goal kick. Taken away at midfield by Wilson. Wilson across to Gebhardt. Now to Seibin. Seibin will throw it in now to Gebhardt. And we have a stoppage. We got a substitution. Well, it's, yeah. Delay is here as number seven Collister. You mentioned Jason Collister with a hat trick. He'll return for Labin. It's an interesting sub because Labin's had quite a game. I wonder if he's just going to try to rest him in and go for broke with 10 minutes or so. Ball in, headed back out that time. Start the other way. Now Yerish, midfield. Kicked the other way by Kervin. And back and forth in midfield we go. Yerish will throw it back in. Into Seibin. Seibin tries to get around defenders. Goes down as he's able to get over to Wilson. Now to Gephardt in the middle of the field. Gephardt through defenders. Wilson tried to get it back to Gephardt on a tap. Kept alive Barbodo and he fouled him. But Gephardt upset. Barboto didn't think he made. He fouled the player. Quick in by Gulf Coast trying to get it down to Kervin. Now instead it goes to Desiano. Desiano down the middle. Desiano looks for some space and had it taken away by Wilson. Now at midfield. Gephardt, boy, just going all after everybody. Goes right over to Grief to come up with the ball. Gephardt determined, runs to the side heading towards the corner and then it gets knocked down and we'll have a free kick coming up. Nice run that time by Derek Gebhardt. The referee's talking Tell if he's talking to Barbodo over there. Yeah, see, for me as a coach, when the referees do that, that's annoying. If it's that egregious of a foul, give him a yellow card. I don't hold up the game to have a 30-second <laughs> chat. Oh, 
Barbodo is going to try the free kick from the side. It's about 10 yards, 15 yards from the goal. Barbodo will try almost a corner kick from a, kind of a weird angle. Ball in, ball up, still alive, still alive, and it's cleared momentarily. Back out to Josh Rodriguez, who tries to keep in the offensive end. Now, headed around for a while. Here's Sybin. And ball out of bounds will stay with Steinbrenner. 16 and a half minutes now left. Steinbrenner is down 2-0 to Gulf Coast in this 4 State Championship game. Deflected in as Barbodo knocked it out of bounds off a deflection. Trying to come in and make a play. It'll be a goal kick again for Eric Scott. Scott. Ball up at midfield. Headed back by Wilson. And then kicked out of bounds. Oh, Akeem not happy there. Puts his hands on top of his head. Did not mean to kick that one, obviously, straight out of bounds. Quick throw in here for Hernandez. And another ball out of bounds. A while since we've had a uh, pretty good scoring opportunity for either team. Steinbrenner had a couple early in the half. That's been about it. Gulf Coast has done a good job of getting numbers back behind the ball. If you look back now, they got almost seven guys behind the ball. Yeah, I think you feel like they're playing as if they have a two-goal lead, playing defense now. Steinbrenner just can't get through. They just they don't need another goal, and yeah. I don't. Steinbrenner is just not committing enough to the attack that they're being dangerous at this point. Fifteen minutes even left here in the second half. Two goals in the first half for Gulf Coast. There's a ball in. He's still alive, and Wilson couldn't get a foot on it. Collister tried the shot. It got deflected, but then cleared out. It's a by nice Gold move. Steinbrenner plays on now. Ball in the middle of the field, and they'll try a shot. That's deflected. Connell. Now Connell, oh. and he misses with a left foot. Uh, coming in that time is Wilson got him the pass. Will Cause was in there. Michael Connell had a shot with the left foot, but he misses right of the goal. Because that's the thing about, you know, they always say about the 2 nothing lead, you know, if Steinbrenner can sneak one in, and they got 15 minutes, and they're just going to have the momentum. Yeah, they could try to get Gulf Coast back on their heels, but they need that goal. We saw that in the 3 8 match. Ponavidra scored two goals early in the second half, but that came after the second yellow card to one of the American Heritage players. So American Heritage had to rally from down two goals, a man down. And that proved to be too tough. Steinbrenner is even. They are not down a man, but they are still down two goals. And we're getting late, under 14 minutes left. Now in this 4A state championship match. Seibin on the corner, or on the side, and he loses it out of bounds. Will be the first boys soccer state championship for either of these teams, whoever wins. First state championship game appearance for both. Gulf Coast out of Naples in Collier County. And Steinbrenner High School named after the late owner of the New York Yankees, George Steinbrenner, who lived in Tampa for many years. And the high school in the Lutz area outside Tampa is named for him as well. There's a foul. Won the girls' state soccer title before Steinbrenner has. No, let's not talk about that one. I don't have one. to remind you about that one. I know it came against your your Merritt Island team, but trying to win their first boys' title. That's when I asked you about that earlier. I know Scott, you said you know you won it in 2010, and then lost in 11. But you remember the loss better than the win because it was a golden goal. <laughs> golden glow, goal flip throw-in. Nice goal, but. I would have thought it was beautiful. It didn't come against us. But now how many games have you won and lost through the year? I mean, how many games? I'm sure you won a lot more than you lost. 
but you still remember the losses more than the wins, don't you? Yeah, especially something like that. It's so stunning and quick. You know, one minute you're thinking you have a chance to win, and the next minute you're packing your bags to get on the bus. Here's Seibin trying to get through. And ball out. Stay with Steinbrenner. Now approaching 12 minutes to go. Wind again comes rushing through the McIntyre Stadium here at Melbourne High School. We'll see Labin back in. Yep, we can give him, see what he can do here in the last 10 if he can sneak one out. Got a rest there. Comes back in for Connell and number 20, Ian Tobel, the junior in for Gulf Coast. And Rim Van takes it away from Labin. Scheinbrenner playing with everybody up now across midfield into Gebhard. Nice first touch by Gebhard. Gebhard will play it back to Brett Wilcos. Now over to Rodriguez. And Seibin had it taken away. The dive to midfield where there's Noah Keen. Keen having a hard time. Now over to Rodriguez. Josh Rodriguez now breaks through the defense. Looking for space, and he will kick the ball in, but nobody there, and Eric Scott will have a goal kick. Headed back by Keane. Now there's Gebhard. Cross field to Barbato. Now to Wilson. Wilson again heads backwards. That ball was deflected off the head of Van. Now ball in for Gephardt. Tried to keep it alive. And now taken away again by Gulf Coast. Boy, a nice slide tackle there. And now ahead to Kervin again. Kervin trying to get around Keen. Give him credit. Didn't let him get it. Now Kervin does come up with it. Tries to cross it. Good play by Yarish. Keep that ball out. Was trying to cross it over was Kerbin to Nick Torreina, number 13. And it was cleared out by Yarish. So it will be Steinbrenner. I think Wilson got a little shaken up, but he's a competitor. He doesn't want to come out of this game. We'll get a free kick near midfield by Steinbrenner. Now 10 minutes to go. It'll be Keen. Keen kicked deep in the box. Oh, there it's good. Oh. Chance in front. Oh, Collister couldn't get on it. Boy, now Collister and going at it with Owen McCorkle right in each other's faces as Scott made the save. Boy, that ball was in. Looking for Labin. Collister could not get his foot on it. Labin headed it forward. Looks like he's going to get. Yeah, stop it again. Have his little chat. Yeah, <laughs> with Collister. No card, it appears. And he also brings McCorkle over. Is that the, hey, don't do that again, guys. Shake hands. Just, 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 just be nice to each other. So there comes a goal kick again. Good chance in that time off the free kick. But again, Starbrenner comes up empty. Now you're looking at nine and a half, 9.38 to go. The earliest of the four championship games we've seen a goal. No, but it holds. Games. We have not seen the losing team score a goal in any of these games. They have been shut out so far. All, every team that's won has gotten a shutout. One nothing, one nothing, two nothing, and now two nothing. But the goal by Kervin was less than eight minutes into the match. That's the earliest goal we've had in any of these championship games. And then Rim Van followed with a goal with 14 minutes left in the first half, and that's where we stood ever since. This is our first game without a restart goal. That's right. Both those goals were in the run of play, including the long shot by Van. I think Steinbrenner wants to change that, though. They'd like well, a restart opportunity here. Now everyone up past midfield for Steinbrenner again. Garish. Wilson back to Barbodo. Barbodo will tip it forward, then Knocked back out momentarily. Kept alive there, and now we'll head the other way with Van. Trying to counter. 
Kervin can't get to it. There's Wilcoz. And then Wilcoz, Labin missed that one. On the right side, here's Shushnovich. But he lost it to Yerish, taken away by Gebhardt. Yeah, I know Gebhardt's tired, but they need him up there. That kid's dangerous. Here he comes. Wilson across to Simon. Simon trying to get it into the corner to Collister. Collister does have it, and he has it deflected, but it stays in. And Gulf Coast keeps it. Here's Andre de Grieve. He just looked back there. Gulf Steinbrenner had one guy up, and Gulf Coast had six guys back. Barboto trying to fight forward. Instead, it ends up with Ren Van. Now Nick Terena. Tries to get it to Kervin. Ooh, Kervin and Yerish. Kervin able to come up with it. Kervin Kervin's had it knocked away. He's still going to get on the end of this. Keen tried to get it to a Kervin in the corner. Had it deflected by Yerish. Ends up with Noah Keen. 7.20 left now. And breaking in front there is Burnett. Tyler Burnett. Had a, a foul there on the side. <laughs> Came that gust of wind again, big time, that we get every now and then. The only thing we, cameraman, we're still here. Cameras are here. Monitor is being held on to by Coach Carswell. <laughs> Ably. It is nice being out in the sun right now, I have to admit. Ball in by Barbodo, and that'll back up Scott. He'll make the play. Barboto tried to chip one in from about 40 yards and didn't fool Scott. Six and a half left from the Gulf Coast will have its first boys soccer title, leading it 2-0 over Steinbrenner. Steinbrenner Warriors will start again on the attack. And Lavin led Sivan too far. Ball goes out of bounds. We'll have a substitution. Gulf Coast going to bring in Eric Santiago, number 10, for Tyler Burnett. Burnett will get a nice hand from a good crowd of folks from Naples over there on the Gulf Coast side. And the Steinbrenner folks as well have made the trip over from Tampa. You mentioned, don't see a lot of games involving two West Coast teams. Uh, that's what Coach Alan Scott said. You know, they wanted to bring some recognition to Collier County. They, got a, they get some recognition from the other schools in football but no real recognition from soccer. So it looks like, you know, if things hold up for the next five minutes, he's going to make good on what he wanted to do. Our game this morning was two East Coast teams, two East Coast teams and two A, Bulls and Gulliver Prep, and one A, Tampa against the team from Miami. Cross, and a missed header opportunity, still alive in the box and kicked out by Rodriguez. Our game at 5A this afternoon will be Cypress Bay, another East Coast team from West and will take on actually a team from Central Florida, West Orange at a Winter Garden. I think West Orange is the only Central Florida team that got in. West Orange, Winter Garden up there in Orange County. So what would you consider Ocala? They had a girls team in. You consider that central? Ocala or is considered, that's, I live up that way, north central Florida. So Ocala is kind of a central Florida team, yeah. That was a good team, Trinity Catholic. Ball in, and Gebhardt missed the header. Now backs it up, crosses it, but he crosses it into the defense. Now high kick backwards that time by DeGrief. And now Kerbin fighting on the other end, and it is taken away. Four and a half minutes to go. Steinbrenner's running out of time. Ball at midfield. Gephardt tried to be on the other end of the ball from Keene. Now Gephardt fighting there again. Now to Rin Van. I'll tell you, the good news here is Gulf Coast, the more they play it in field, <laughs> the more time will run off the clock. Yeah, you mentioned Forest. Ocala Forest was a team that lost to, to 
Steinbrenner in the state semifinal round in overtime. And you said Trinity Catholic. That is another program up there. It's another good girls soccer team as well. We yeah, have three and a half minutes left. And a foul right at midfield. They'll get Barbodo for that one. Three minutes now to go, and it looks like the Gulf Coast players are up now off the bench, and now they're starting to feel it. We're going to have our second school of sharks today. Yeah. <laughs> to win a state championship. Panavidra Sharks this morning and the Gulf Coast Sharks this afternoon. Again, both smell blood in the water, and you're right. Thanks to a goal from... We call him Rin Van Winkle, as you said earlier, <laughs> Coach. Rin Van, what a goal he had. That's probably that's the best goal we've seen, I'd say, this week. I wasn't here last week, but uh, I don't think maybe one of the better goals we've seen here in the two weeks of finals. Yeah, he got all of that from a long way out. Say about 35, 40 yards. Here's Kervin. He had a first half goal. He tries one and he'll just miss his wide right. He wanted that one. Christian Knight unhappy with the defense, but they left Kervin wide open in the middle of the field, and he tried one from about 25 out and had a lot on it again. Yeah, I mean, I'd, uh, I'd have to say he's the man of the match. Two and a half minutes now to go. Gulf Coast fans, the students, and the parents over there on their feet as they now see that state title getting closer. See if Steinbrenner tries to play up their goalie now. Knight kind of creeping up towards midfield. And there's a takedown. We'll have a free. Oh, they're going to say Gulf Coast ball. Wow. Steinbrenner fans don't like that call. But now with almost two minutes to go, the riding seems to be about on, about on the wall. Yep, Steinbrenner got behind early on that one goal, and then they gave up the second goal. And after that, just haven't been able to get the, uh, the offense going here in the second half. It's it's hard hard to hard to be a goal down and have to chase the game and bring it back in the state final. You know, it seems these, too good. These boys have done everything they could. You know, they've hustled. Every kid who's come in has worked hard. So Sybin will attempt a free kick. One thirty-seven left. The clock stopped. Did we get a yellow card here? No, I guess not. I thought we did. Labin heading towards the sideline. Going to get Elliott Smith in the game. First time we're going to get him some playing time in the state championship game. One of the Steinbrenner seniors. He'd like to do something here. Even if it's not for the win, maybe. Seven seniors, only seven on the team. Collister and Barbodo among them, along with Lively, Sybin, and Gephardt. Referees are discussing dinner plans? I don't know. What, what are they discussing at this point? I don't know. They're talking a lot. Both back and forth here. So we've got that set. 137 to go. I think, I think there might be some confusion on the clock. Ball in by Barbodo. Seibin now heads the other way. Yeah, you got to pump this back in. Barbodo is going to try it. It's deflected and taken away. Boy, that went all the way there for play worked pretty well. <laughs> As Tobel came in and deflected that kick. Maybe time for, no. Steinbrenner again will have a free kick. 117 left now. They're already starting the hugs on the sidelines. The players are up near the field for the Gulf Coast High School Sharks out of Naples. That's just amazing. We talked about it earlier to come from a two-win season four years ago to state champions. They'll have a foul in the box on Steinbrenner. Oh, team's talking a little bit here. Yeah, I mean, I think we're seeing some the Gulf Coast kids just got to get out of there. You know, you're, yeah. you're a minute away from a state championship. All's good. Oh, we got a yellow card. That's a red card. That's yeah. Shushnovich has already got a yellow. He did. I don't know if that was for complaining or what. He was arguing with the official 
about something there, and he got a quick yellow, and you're right, that's two yellows equals a red, and that's, <laughs> with a minute two to go, probably not going to hurt Gulf Coast too much, but Sylvester Shushnevich is out of the game, so it will be a one-man advantage for Steinbrenner. I tell you, at this point, you need to bring in, I'd bring your goalie up, he's still back. This is a goal kick, though, first. We'll see if they bring Knight up on offense as Scott will kick it away. Headed the other way. Ball up in the air, and I guess if you're going to have a red card, that's the best time to get one. <laughs> Last minute up two goals. It looks like all the Sharks fans are up on the front gate, up on the front fence. Barboto to Wilson. And it's taken away. Steinbrenner takes it back, though, with Wilson. Now 30 seconds left. There's the chant of, hey, hey, goodbye again. We heard that this morning as well from Apana Vidra faithful. Ball is booted towards midfield. 18 seconds left. And long ball in, trying to get it down there. That will head out. And that's going to be it. 10 seconds, 9 seconds. Eric Scott really doesn't even have to put this ball back in play. He looks like he's going to. That counts it down, and nope, he isn't. He'll join his teammates at midfield and across the other side of the field as the Gulf Coast Sharks will run over and say hello to their fellow students, parents, and fans as the Gulf Coast Sharks out of Naples are the 4A state champions for 2013 as they beat the George Steinbrenner Warriors 2 to nothing. Goals in the first half for Gulf Coast. Clayton Kervin with 32.26 left in the half. And then Rin Van with 14.07 to go in the half. And they held on to the second half for the win. Congratulations to Gulf Coast. That was what a great you game. You know, both good teams, both good coaches. Well played game. And you, know, you just got to be happy to those kids. Gulf Coast 19-3-3 all the way from a district runner-up. They went on the road and won all their playoff games and win today here at Melbourne High School in the state championship game. And for Steinbrenner, they finished 19-3-3. But a great season for the George Steinbrenner High School Warriors. They made their first appearance in a state championship game, as did Gulf Coast. All right, well, that's going to do it for our coverage of this 4A state championship game. Our final, once again, the Gulf Coast Sharks from Naples 2 and the George Steinbrenner Warriors from Tampa nothing. For Coach Scott Carswell, for our crew here in Melbourne, I'm Marty Palman saying so long. This has been a production of the FHSA Network and Play On Sports. We'll see you at 4.05, a kickoff the 5A championship game. So long for now from Melbourne.
Congratulations again, golf News State Champions Class 4A 2013.